Hey guys, hi, how are you today? I bring you part two of this series of videos where I talk about the things that we like and dislike about this 2024 Genesis GV70. And today I'll give you the five things that we dislike about it. But first, if this is your first time here, I suggest that you watch my other video where I talk about the things that we like about this beauty so that you get a proper context of what I'm about to say. Please understand that my point in bringing this video is for those of you that are about to test drive this thing because like me you're gonna be blown away by the positives and i feel that sometimes we just don't spend enough time with vehicles that we test drive so the negatives don't have enough time to come to surface in other videos i always recommend that you get an extended test drive by using turo some dealerships will allow you to keep the car overnight i remember gm used to have a program where you keep the car for three days and genesis gives you the option to have the vehicle delivered to you for a test drive and i think that's a great option that i didn't use and i wonder how long you're allowed to keep the vehicle i made a conscientious effort to come up with five things to dislike about a gb70 i struggle um, but i did come up with five and in fact so that you don't feel like i'm dragging you along i will give you them right now and it's up to you if you want to stick around to see why i picked this five number one the fabric inserts of the seats of the sport prestige package two the fingerprint authentication system three the panorama sunroof i mean the tinting number four the navigation system and number five the genesis connect the services app after 5,000 miles and about nine weeks with our gv70 the new car sent just doesn't fade away we still love this vehicle and if anything we're still getting acquainted with it the more we drive it the more we connect with it this is our first modern vehicle since we got rid of our 2021 model y that vehicle did so many things so well we got used to the simplicity and the superb implementation of technology unfortunately our driving pattern doesn't allow us to have an ev which is not compatible with an ev as of today i hope this changes in the future but for now internal combustion engine cars work best for us the five things that we picked are in order of most to least disliked if that makes any sense number one let's start with the seats i like the fact that they're ventilated we live in southern california and in some parts the temperature reaches over 100 degrees in the summer so having that feature is highly desirable and the sport prestige package is the only one of the 2.5 engine choice that gives you ventilated seats in the base engine you start with leather seats and the 2.5 gv70 comes in four different trim levels called the standard the select the advanced and the sport prestige you have to skip the first two trim levels to access leather seating. In anything until you opt for the advanced package that you get access to leather seats, but they're not ventilated. And that's one of the reasons why we opted for the Sport Prestige package, only to buzz down to fabric surfaces in the larger portions of the seat. Let me show you what I mean. Of course, that if you have shown an interest for this vehicle, you probably went on the brochure, you went online, you went to the website, you see all the reviews, but this is my beef with these seats. So this is leather, but notice how in the sitting portion it's covered by this massive cloth. It's like a mesh. I just don't know how durable this will be. And then here it's a little smaller. So in the lumber area, you don't have it. So it's good for all these high friction areas that if you have older cars, you notice how this start to go. And as well as this, I don't have an issue with the quality of the material of the leather. Notice how this is double stitched leather. It looks very sturdy. I really like it. And then in the back seat, where my dogs ride same thing you have this larger portion of the seat covered with this mesh am i nitpicking this vehicle let me know in the comments take for example my 2007 acura tsx nearly 20 year old vehicle and the leather seats are still in one piece same thing with my 1989 bmw 325 those are leather or vinyl and um, they're still in pretty good shape and i doubt that this surfaces are going to be nearly as durable and that's a shame because i plan to keep this vehicle for a long time so I'm gonna have to be extra careful not to stain or rip these seats, especially because I have nephews and pets. Number two, the fingerprint authentication system. It's fairly redundant. To start, it's very glitchy, so it takes me two or three times to get through it, and I don't understand the purpose of it. What would be the difference between this glitchy feature and just pressing the memory one or two to load the save profile settings, let alone the app being able to just do it for you as you access the vehicle like Tesla does. Number three, the panoramic sunroof tinting. I love the panoramic sunroof on this. I've had panoramic sunroofs in other vehicles before, 
and I like this option because they give you this sense of openness while driving. I find the tinting of this glass to be a little bit too dark. Right now it's noon and notice there's not a lot of light. To give you an idea, the panorama sunroof in the Model Y was massive and uninterrupted for breathtaking views that I find very relaxing while driving. But unfortunately, the Model Y doesn't come with the cover. So on hot sunny days like today, it irradiates heat into the cabin. The GV70 comes with the cover. So that's why I don't understand why Genesis made the glass so dark that you can barely see through during the day and definitely nothing at night. Now let me show you the sunroof. I cannot get over this interior, it's so gorgeous. It's freshly clean, so it looks amazing, right? Right now, it's about noon in California sun. And notice you don't see a lot of light coming in. And this, the video that I shot with the main camera, you're gonna see that I look very dark. So at night, I just don't get to see anything out. So that's, it's not very translucent. And this is the sunroof at night. Notice how it's not even that dark outside, yet you can barely see anything out this sunroof. So I think it's a missed opportunity by Genesis. Number four, the navigation system. I believe this is provided by TomTom's Maps. I have given it a chance. I like some of the features, but in general, I just don't like it because it's missing many of the references that Google Maps uses to situate you in regards to your next step. It's very general and we only use it on open roads, but it's pretty much useless when we are driving in the intricate streets of downtown areas like San Diego or other cities. It's included when you go select and up, but I wouldn't pay for it. We pretty much resort to Android Auto for its familiarity. So we're just used to Google Maps and we think it's just better overall. Number five, the Genesis Connected Services app. I remember when I went through the brochure online of the GV70 a couple of years back, and I was delighted to find its technology very advanced with things like fingerprint authentication system and the app. But in real life, in the day-to-day, -day, the app is light years away from what you can find in a Tesla, for example. The Genesis app seems to be more of an afterthought. You'll find it useful if this is your first vehicle with something similar, but if you have tasted the great implementation of Tesla, this app, will look pretty much rudimentary. To give you an example, it says that you can schedule service for your vehicle through the app, and I just couldn't do it. I had to call in old school and just tell them that I wanted the 5,000 mile service. In the app, it will ask you to choose between express and service, but it wouldn't tell you what it is. So how would I know what to schedule my vehicle for? The app will also warn you that you left your vehicle unlocked when you walk away, but why should it? I wonder how hard it would be to get this vehicle the walk away feature without having to touch the door handle or the remote key. So the vehicle will ask you if you want to lock the door remotely and then you do and it does that thing for you like in a few seconds. But again, it's nice, but rudimentary. My guess is that developing software must be a lot more difficult than I think it is because our GV70 does detect when you approach the car and the puddle lights turn on. And it's not until you put your hand in the door handle that the vehicle unlocks itself. So in a similar manner, couldn't it detect when you're walking away and just lock itself? Or Tesla did. Sure, you can say that I bring up references of the Tesla too much and that these are first world problems, but... It is what it is. And also locating the vehicle is a short because the app won't give you the location in real time. And it's also not nearly as precise as how it's featured on the Model Y. One plus that I will give this app is that it's free of charge, unlike the one from Lexus that is also very clumsy and uh, bad. And on that one, you pay $8. Uh, we do use the remote start a lot and it's pretty nice, but that's about it. If you're enjoying LTO video, please consider subscribing for more related content Let's continue. And so there you have the five things we dislike about our 2024 Genesis GV70. None of them are deal breakers. So we continue to love this SUV and look forward to more trips. Actually, in the next few weeks, um, I will embark on a trip from California to Arkansas. That's like over 3,000 miles in this beauty. And I'll let you know all about it. To this day, the positives definitely outweigh the negatives by a lot. As I said earlier, I struggled to come up with five negatives. Of the ones mentioned, I will give the first one, the one about the seats, a closer look. Maybe if you don't need the ventilated seats, I would just skip the Sport Prestige package altogether as the Advance has most of the features of the Sport Prestige at a lesser price with smaller diameter wheels for maybe a more comfortable ride and definitely better fuel economy. This package works for us for the much more aggressive looks because of the bigger wheels, the different front fascia, the rear bumper, and the exhaust tips. The rear bumper cladding may be a little bit excessive for my taste, but it hides away perfectly when you opt for the black exterior. And another thing I want to mention is that our first uh, service is due 
It's a 5,000 mile service and I scheduled an appointment and I did run into a couple of surprises when scheduling this thing for service, but I'll let you know about them in the next video. Thank you for watching and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, like the video. I'll see you next time.